I'll never forget when I first landed in Houston. It was 1982, and some, I hadn't been here for five minutes. Somebody came up to me and said, y'all come back now, here. And I went, excuse me? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> went straight out of my head. You see, I'd never heard the word y'all before in my life. And then later on, I learned that the plural of y'all was all y'all. <laughs> Hello, and you think I talk funny? <laughs> I had to learn a lot of things about Texas, and since I've been here, I've had to actually, one of the things I learned was uh, about the four seasons. You get to relearn the four seasons. There's almost summer, summer, still summer, Christmas. <laughs> the other thing I learned is that uh, fried catfish is the other white meat. <laughs> And then, of course, there was this part about driving etiquette. <laughs> that was interesting. Uh, when, you pull a, when you approach a four-way stop sign, the vehicle with the largest tires has the right of way. <laughs> and then, of course, I still don't know where over yonder is. <laughs> Can anybody tell me? No, see, you don't know either. And you've lived here all your lives. Well, of course, I've got some strange questions about Australia, too. Uh, one man came up to me one day and said, look, if I go down to Sydney, will I be able to see kangaroos jumping around the streets? <laughs> I looked him straight in the eye and said, well, sir, that'll depend entirely on how much you've had to drink. <laughs> and then this woman who was like really athletic type, don't you just hate that type? Well, she just came up and she said, look, I'd like to walk from Perth to Sydney. Can I just follow the railroad tracks? I said, sure, it's only 7,000 miles. I mean, you might want to get a head start. <laughs> Did you know that the land mass of Australia is exactly the same as the land mass of the United States? Only you've got 262 something million people, we have 22. <laughs> Lot. Lots of people slept through geography, I discovered. One uh, person came up to me and said, oh, by the way, um, when do you celebrate Thanksgiving down under? <laughs> uh, hello, <laughs> you'd be the country with the pilgrims and the turkeys, <laughs> we would be the ones, the convicts with Vegemite. <laughs> and yeah, it's pretty interesting. And then somebody else, my favorite, said, oh, do you have American music in Australia? And I said, are you nuts? I said, Billy Joel rules. <laughs> End of segment one. First segment is entitled um, From Average to Awesome. See, I've learned throughout my musical career that it's not enough to be good at doing what you love to do. You have to be a jack of several trades before you get to be master of one. And in today's economy, it means you've got to be great. Because let's face it, there's too many people out there competing for the same job. There's four generations in the workplace today, Gen X, Gen Y, baby boomers and traditionalists. And there's just simply no room for mediocre skills. And so that's why extraordinary performance is the new norm. So it's basically shape up or ship out. You know, throughout all the years of traveling around the world playing the piano, I've discovered one thing. I've discovered that you're constantly changing. Just like Jim said, you have to learn new things all the time. I had to constantly find ways of improving my performance and learning new music. I mean. You would believe this, but in Japan, I had to learn how to play rock and roll. <laughs> Go figure. I mean, and so, it's, and so it is the same today. Only the difference between then and now is now there's so many more comp people competing and looking for work. And so how do you stand out from the crowd? Because you have to do that. Here's five ways to differentiate yourself. Number one. Be innovative. Be innovative. Apply critical thinking. Just go beyond and move beyond doing what you're just told. Number two, ask questions that'll get answers to provide better customer service. Number three, use new technology. Stay up with it, just like you're doing right now. <laughs> <laughs> Keep up with tweeting and texting and social media. Learn how it can maximize and benefit your company. Number four is make changes. Make suggestions to make changes. Maybe it's a new procedure, a new method. 
And then number five, be a great team player, be likable and stay humble. Nobody likes arrogance. I learned a lot about dealing with people on when I had to play on a cruise ship in the South Pacific Islands. I mean, tough job, but somebody had to do it, right? Well, here's the deal. On a cruise ship, there, on this particular cruise ship, there were a thousand passengers and everybody knew me. And everybody thought that they could come up to me anytime they wanted, 24 seven, day or night, and just tell me about the time they used to play piano when they were kids, and they wish, how they wish they could still play it now, and blah, 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 and I was so not interested. And I mean, the thing is, it drove me nuts, especially since my only escape was overboard. <laughs> not a good option. And so I had to learn new communication skills. And I had to learn how to deal with people. I had to learn how to be nice to people, even if I didn't feel like it. Does that sound familiar? <laughs> we all have to do that because the tr truth is we're all in the people business. We're all in the customer service business. We have to build great relationships with the people we work with and the people we serve. Why? Because it takes more than one person to deliver excellence and achieve goals. End of segment number one. <laughs>